Have you ever taken your car to have it inspected? And somebody said, sorry, we have a problem here. Well, what do you do? Where do you go? How does it affect what happens? Uh, we're going to talk about that some this morning. And we're also going to talk about some other issues going on with your car, one of them being the heat. You know, when you get out and you get stuck in some of these traffic situations, you have to deal with those as well. Glenn Johnson joins us this morning from Johnson's Shell here in Beaumont. Morning, Glenn. How are you? Dan, how are you? I'm um, terrific, thanks. Good to see you. Hey, I know you're a state inspection location, right? Correct, yes, sir. Now, so in, 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 this is not something that the stations decide. There's a mandated list of do's and don'ts, right, for state inspections? Yes, sir. And now everything's computerized. Uh, if you bring your car in for inspection, you need to, uh, if you're from out of town, you need to bring the registration. Uh, if you're just moving to the area in a current insurance card, uh, then we take that information, we test drive the car, make sure the brakes stop properly, and then we pull it into the bay. Whenever we pull it in, we check your lights, front and rear, turn signals right and left. We open the hood, uh, check, make sure all your emission stuff is still intact and hasn't been monkeyed with. Uh, we check your windshield wiper blades, uh, check the tint on your windows now. Last year, as of September the 1st, a year ago, we changed the tint rule, or we didn't, the state changed the tint rule, and a lot of people's been upset because their tent's too dark. Well, that's not us, that's the state, so you still have to take it off and, and make the adjustments necessary to get it inspected at the, the rules and regulations that we have at this time. Now, let me ask you this, Glenn. When we talk about this tent, how, I mean, what, what are the rules? How should I know this, and how do you judge whether it meets the requirement? We have a, a meter that, uh, we have a meter that we put on the window and it tells us what the percentage of light transfer is. And uh, with that information, we know if it's legal or illegal. We have people come in from time to time that's fixing to buy a new car and says, this tent looks awful dark, would you check it? We don't charge anything to check it. I got it you. just takes a second to do it. And then the customer feels secure about uh, his right. uh, when he gets ready to go get an inspection. So what do I mean? Does it say can you have darker tent on back windows than you can front window? I know that was the old rule. Correct. It's still the same rule. You just can't have it completely blacked out. You can't have transparent colors like silver tint or whatever on the back. But uh, the front tint uh, can be lighter than the back, and I yes, you. you can have darker. Uh, a couple misconceptions that people have about inspections is, is uh, cracks in the windshield. As long as the crack in the windshield don't blur the vision of the driver, it's okay. Uh, or if you can catch your fingernail in it, it it's not good. If it's cracked enough for it to be um, have be able to be able to catch your finger in it and the reason for that if you can catch your finger in it when that wiper blade goes over it it cuts it so uh, that's two misconceptions that a lot of people have that about the uh, windshield cracks now if you have cracks in the lenses front or rear where the light will disperse through it it's not legal and don't come up with red tape over a crack. That don't work either, or glue over a, a crack. Right. It has to be replaced. Or if the light fixture, you see a lot of cars with the light fixture with moisture in them, right. especially after a rain, that fixture's not any good anymore because it deteriorates the silver reflective on the back of the light. So that's another thing that people don't understand. Well, they say, well, the light works. Well, it might work, but it's still not legal. Right, doesn't meet state standards. Now, I think Bobby was over there. And then whenever we test the tires, right? Uh, like on this tire here, on this car, we already know this car's got it. The tires is gonna fail because the bar in between the tire treads is touching on two consecutive uh, grooves. 
Uh, we already know that this tire is not any good, and this customer is going to put a set of tires on this car today. Now, I know the old rule was, Glenn, I, it seems like you used to use a coin to check the tread. Well, that's a good rule of thumb. A lot of people use a penny, and if it's 230 seconds, it's actually the head of the penny to the outside of it, and if it's not that deep, the tire's not any good either. So that's a that's an old uh, thing that people do, and people still do it. But yeah. uh, we have a gauge to go by okay. that tells us it's two or three thirty seconds or whatever left. All right. Now the other thing that I want to find out before I let you go: what if I fail the inspection? What if, what if I don't meet the standards? Then what happens? What's the process? Okay. Now a lot of people say, "Well, I'll go somewhere else and get it inspected." Well, you can do that, but you're going to have to pay again when you come in to get a car inspected. You have to pay regardless if it passes or fails, and then we put it into the computer. Well, if you go somewhere else, when we plug in the serial number of that car, the computer automatically tells us that this car has already been rejected somewhere else. I got you. And if you've been rejected somewhere else, when we do the complete inspection, you still have to pay again unless you take it back. You have. 15 days to take it back to the original inspector once you fix the uh, problems that you have with the car, whether it's a tire or tent or a cracked lens or whatever. You have 15 days and you keep that rejection slip on your dash and hopefully that will keep you from getting a ticket. 99% of the time they won't give you a ticket if right. they see you've been trying. All right, sounds good. Glenn, we're going to come back and talk some more a little bit later this morning. Again, Glenn Johnson at Johnson Shell talking about inspections and what it takes to get that state inspection. Again, what you do if, if it doesn't quite meet the standards.